with this presentation is to, is to um, present to you how what are the expansion loops, when we need to use it, okay, and how we calculate them, okay. Is a as you are going to see is a it will be a manually calculation and it's very easy to, to use okay to, to calculate the idea the more than the calculate by itself of the expansion loop is how we create or we put all the expansion loop of the line on a rack together in order to optimize the designs and the space that we are using okay that's the the, the, the main focus of the of the topic is that okay so. Uh, in order to start to, to uh, start to talk about the expansion loop, I will introduce a little bit where these lines are. Okay, all the lines that usually require expansion loops are lines that has a long straight run of pipe. Okay, or we, or is they are on a track at grade level. Okay, in which it doesn't have too much problem only space, but it's at grade level. Okay. But the most important lines that requires our attention as a stress analyst are the lines that go on a rack, on a pipe rack. Okay? So because I don't know if everyone knows what is a pipe rack or not, I will give you a, a short introduction of what is a pipe rack. Okay? The pipe rack is the main structure of a unit. Okay? It's the, it's the, it's the structure that allows me to carry the lines from one equipment to another equipment. Okay? In a order orderly way okay it means I don't have I don't want to have pipe going through all the space okay so it helped me to carry the lines from one point to another point of the unit okay also because it's a big structure a unit doesn't need only pipe also need cables okay so the tracks are, are also used to to use to put the trays with instrument and electrical cables okay so normally the structure of a rack is like this okay we have the rack section okay we have the longitudinal beams the cross beam and the columns okay mm -hmm. normally this is the trays okay this is the first level the second level the third level okay the amount of level depends on the size of the units Okay, if I have a small unit, we have less trays. If I have huge uh, unit or it's an interconnecting pipe rack, I, I may probably need a, high, a higher and bigger rack. Okay, <coughs> the one who this define the rack geometry, I mean the size of the geometry, the width, the height, the amount of level, is the piping designer. Okay. The piping designer use the project specification, use the PNID, use the piping plan to define how many levels they will have, the width of the pipe rack, and the height between levels. Okay. Normally, the all piping all pipe rack has three trays. The typically, okay, the process tray, the utility tray, and the flare tray. Okay. And if the is a big unit and also I use the the rack to carry on the trays for instrument and electrical cable trays, normally they have a level only for them. Okay? Because most of the client doesn't want to have together pipes and trays. Okay? So <coughs> probably they have uh, whoop, the um, usually the, the instrument and electrical tray is between the utility and the flare tray. Okay? The pro this is the, the order, the, the most common order okay, of the lines. You have the process tray, all the process lines go here, the utility lines, the utility train has all the utility lines there, and the flare. Okay? The flare go up, okay? On the always on the last. Okay? 